weeks pass. Now we are far out into the Pacific, which is a very considerable body of water. Monotony shuts down on us between our duties. Guessing where we're bound is still our chief pastime. Will we put into Pearl? Are we going to Iron Bottom Bay? Or maybe even to the Aleutians? All such gossip and rumor are called scuttlebutt or drinking fountain conversation. Throughout the ship, men get together in little groups to take refuge from the heavy burden of waiting for something to happen. And then one day out of nowhere comes a fast fleet tanker and we're refueled at sea. This tells us something. This tells us that we are not going to Pearl or any other land base for a long, long time. Besides our skipper, we have an admiral aboard, a sea dog who's been a naval flyer for nearly 20 years. Until now, only these officers have known where we are to go. But now Jocko, our captain, confers with the air group commander and reveals the plan. A fighting lady has been ordered to make a strike. She will pass through waters where no carrier task force has ventured since the bloody Battle of Midway. Remember, this is 1943, long before we took the Marshall Islands. Weather studies are made, and though this is a daily routine, somehow the whole ship senses that something is about to happen. Even before the news is broadcast to all of us, there's a new tension, atmosphere of expectancy. And then we are told, we have traveled more than 7,000 miles from Panama, so that tomorrow, August 30th, 1943, we can strike the Jap base of Marcus Island, deep within the enemy's ring of defenses. The evening before our first strike, the air group commander briefs all his pilots with maps and a model of our target. We are sticking out our necks to within a thousand miles of Tokyo to divert the Japs' attention from other American activities far south and east of Marcus. Those of us who have never before been in battle, as most of us, ask a lot of questions of those who have seen action. See, gunners, don't break off until you're practically on the same course, right astern of the enemy. Then push over fast. Outwardly, we try to seem composed and cheerful. A lot's going on inside our minds. We question our most inner selves. What will it be like? How will we take it? Will we do all right? This is the night when a lot of boys write one more letter home. Among those playing AC Ducey in the ward room is a chubby 23-year-old from Eureka Springs, Arkansas, Lieutenant E.T. Stover, nicknamed Smokey. That's he sitting on the far right. Having flown 50 missions at Guadalcanal, Smokey has been ordered to take a rest. He'd much rather be flying. Before dark on the eve of battle, our planes are loaded with bombs and gas. So that each plane will be in its precise position for a speedy takeoff, we spot and respot our deck. Now all is perfect. We will strike at dawn. 